Hello and welcome to the second episode of Not Your Average Joe. My name is Joe and today we're going to be talking about the world's biggest interview. Yes, the Harry and Meghan interview with Oprah because that is all anyone is talking about. Like Women's Day just passed us by and the woman of the hour was Meghan Markle because my God, her and Harry dropped bombs they chose violence but you know what we're gonna get into it a little later we're also going to be talking about behind her eyes which is an amazing series that is up on netflix i'm going to be giving you the reasons why you should be watching it and we're going to be also going through the biggest eight songs that you should be listening to right now the international edition it is not your average joe and let's get this started This is not your average Joe. My name is Joe and we're going to be talking about the interview of the year. I'm talking about the Meghan Harry interview with Oprah that aired. It was really hard. Three days before our wedding, we got married. That conversation, <laughs> I'm never going to share. And we're going to be talking about big bombs that they dropped because the interview actually covered a lot of stuff so we're just going to go quickly and go through the interview and before i even start i need to say a couple of things like number one i have always like i wouldn't say loved the royal family but i've always followed it very keenly there's a certain affinity i have to the royal family all the way back since diana you know, and I feel like most of us kind of fell in love with the royal family because of Diana. Diana really put the royal family in a very interesting light. And so, of course, followed it through her life. And then, of course, when she dies, it, and it was tragic. I mean, we all remember the scene of her sons walking behind a casket. It was tragic. And we're all hoping for the best when it came to the boys and what they would achieve in the future. And so... I, because I'm, I guess I'm closer to Harry in age, I've always had this, okay, small crush on Harry. <laughs> it has waned, just to flip, because it was a time when William looked fantastic, when he had all his hair. But that changed, so it shifted to Harry. And, you know, he's just one of those people who was just very interesting. He seemed like a very, very interesting royal. And so when he started dating, I was like, oh, it's going to be interesting to see who he's going to date. So I was excited when I heard that Harry was dating a Zim South African girl, Chelsea Davy, because she was African, but Chelsea Davy is white. So I wasn't totally pumped, but I just thought, oh, this guy is open minded that he could actually date people who were not of blue blood. You know, he could actually date a commoner, people you wouldn't expect a prince to date. And I thought that that was actually really cool, right? So that was always great. And Harry has not lived the, the typical prince life. He has done a number of crazy things. Harry's been mixed up with drink and drugs. He's, he's run around with a, a, a bad crowd. <laughs> he's got into scrapes with photographers outside nightclubs. And so when, of course, the news came out that he was dating Meghan Markle, I was like, yes, yes, black girls winning. And it was just so beautiful. We watched the wedding and then what happens, happens. It's just tragic all round. But I think now let's just jump into the big points of the interview. I think one of the biggest bombshells that they dropped, I'm going to start with the good ones because Meghan and Harry are expecting their second child. So in the interview, with Oprah, they revealed that the sex of the second baby. You can tell her. No, I give her. No, no. It's a girl. It's going to be a girl, which is fantastic. But they said they were not going to be having any more kids. Two is it? Done. Two is it. Kind of hope that they do, but another thing that they brought up was, oh yes. Three days before our wedding, we got married. Ah. No one knows that. I was not surprised by this. 
I was thinking that if I was in a similar situation and I was going to have a ridiculous spectacle of a wedding, I wouldn't want that. I would want something quiet and intimate. It's a wedding. I don't want to have, you know, my most intimate moment shared with the whole world. That I think if anyone was going to do this, it was going to be them. Wait, hold, hold up. Wait a minute. Actually, Harry relying on Princess Diana's money after his family cut him off. Your family cut you off? Yeah. In the first half, the first quarter of 2020, I think she saw it coming. And I certainly felt her presence throughout this whole process. Now this, again, I was not surprised because I think people need to understand is that the royal family has a very interesting relationship. They are a family that's almost play acting and taxpayers actually pay for these people's lifestyle and so if harry is cut off it's because he's not going to be doing the family business the family business is to represent the monarch and so if he's not going to be in those duties why should he receive the money I guess there are going to be some people who will have qualms with that, but I just thought, hey, you can't, you know, have your cake and eat it. You can't be getting taxpayers' money, yet you're not doing the job that everyone is expected to do. So that, I just thought, whining, 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 whining. But you know what? It's a good thing that Diana left money enough for him. And he's able to now support his family or he's not able to support his family. And this is why they had their interview. From my perspective, all I needed was enough money to be able to pay for security, to keep my family safe. Um, we need to also talk about Meghan's mental health and her relationship with the British tabloids because the two are very, very related. I know there's an obsession with how things look but has anyone talked about how it feels? Because right now, I could not feel lonelier. So when it comes to Megan's mental health, I only have sympathy for her because, good Lord, I don't think anyone can describe the pressure of being a royal. Absolutely no one. Like, no one can put it in two proper words. It must be so much pressure. But what I found a little surprising was her unpreparedness for it she didn't seem very prepared and yet it's something that i think everyone would expect like we see these guys always putting up a show but in the interview she mentions how she didn't really know about harry i've never looked up my husband online i just didn't feel a need to because everything that i needed to know he was sharing with me right what what you didn't know about harry but there's a picture of you in front of Buckingham Palace. But you know what? She's American and Americans can be very oblivious of even the most obvious things. So maybe. Were you silent or were you silenced? The latter. It's very sad that she didn't get the support she needed. And that was just tragic. But I mean, even John Oliver said it. I would not blame her if she pulled out of this at the last minute. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think you need to have just seen the pilot episode of The Crown to get a basic sense of she might be marrying into a family that could cause her some emotional complications. So I only have sympathy for her. The pressure must have been insane. Absolutely insane. Now, when it comes to the tabloids, I'm sorry, but it's also strange she didn't expect this. I mean, his older brother just got married as well a couple of years back, and... How do you not expect to be compared? Like, this is something I thought she would have expected, but she didn't, and it's so sad. But the thing is that they would have compared Harry's wife, no matter who she was, to Kate. No matter who, like, if Harry married a potato, they would have compared that potato to Kate. And, of course, she would have to lose. Like, that's how it was going to be. Like, the British tabloids kind of go for sensationalism. And it's just sad that she was an easy target. And now I just hope that she's gotten the help that she needs because good Lord knows that your mental health is one of the things that you need to be checking, okay? Like, if you don't, you can break down. It's a very sad example they give in the interview of how they had to attend this function and how she knew she was not going to make it. And 
she talks about how he's holding her hands or they are holding hands so tight that their knuckles turn white. That, ooh, that pressure, pressure of service, it's a lot. It's a lot. But then you see, the thing is that it comes with a job and this is their job. And I guess we all have pressure in our lives, but we all need also the help that, that we need. We all need help and we should be allowed to get it. And it's tragic that they didn't allow her to get that help, but I hope she's getting it now. And now for me, this was the biggest bomb. Concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. What? And who, who is having that conversation? Oh God, this bomb did not need to be detonated. The fact that Megan and Harry talked about a conversation with an unknown family member member of the royal family who was talking about how dark their son's skin was going to be because Archie hadn't yet been born. The reason I have a problem with this is because why? If you're going to call out something that you disagree with, call it out fully. Bring it to the light. Do not shirk. What was that conversation? That conversation <laughs> I'm never going to share. Why? just fuels it and actually when it comes to this entire interview this was the biggest bomb they dropped and i'm not even surprised that it is the thing that has carried this interview because it is so bad they didn't need to do this they didn't because it has no point what do they gain apart from hurting the monarch and seeing people's reactions to this has just been ridiculous because you go on twitter especially black twitter seeing black twitter dragging the royal family putting up pictures and i'm like people remember these americans they don't have culture they have no culture, no sense of duty, no idea what it means to actually be in a royal family. And the strangest thing is that we do because we've seen royal families. So no wonder they don't get it because they live in that world where you cancel anything you don't agree with, which I absolutely disagree with. Does the institution need to be called out for its racism? Yes. Does it need to be corrected? Yes. Does it deserve to be canceled? For this, absolutely not. And I feel like Harry also added insult to injury by talking about his father and his brother being trapped. How you were trapped? Trapped within the system, like the rest of my family are. My father and my brother, they are trapped. They don't get to leave. They've chosen to stay in that system. He decided to opt out. And now he's talking about them like they have some kind of Stockholm syndrome, which I'm like, we know it's tough, but that's the life they live. And there are certain benefits that they have that most people don't have because these guys don't work no more nine to five jobs. Okay. And so when they dropped this bomb, there was absolutely no point to it. It just felt like this was going to be the thing that was going to kick up the ratings. And it did. It really, really did. And so when the queen makes a statement and only addresses that thing, it shows you how important it is. And I just feel sad. I, just, I feel really sorry for the queen because this was not how you should be spending your women's day. You do not need your grandson dragging the monarchy to the institution that you have been living for, working for, for the last 70 years you don't need that oh and by the way her husband is in hospital i feel like the timing of this interview was just to maximize ratings because harry and megan are moving to the united states and want to have a new life and i get it you want to have a new life go right ahead but you do not need to drag entire monarch are there certain things that the monarch needs to address yes they do but Throwing bombs and not calling out the people. I wanted them to call out whoever that was. Seriously. Honestly, I wanted to know who it was. And because right now, everyone thinks it's Prince Charles. 
everyone's bet is that it's Prince Charles because good Lord knows that man has said some crazy stuff over the years. But you know what? That's just my two cents. Okay, now, so as I end this, I just wanted to put a question out there. So when they had this interview, who gained the most? Because I don't think it was Harry. Harry had to say some crazy things about his family and that cannot be a win. Oprah, hell yes. Megan, most likely yes. Us, who have gotten to know about the royal family in ways that maybe we shouldn't have. Yes, we've gained. And the only person who's lost is Harry and the royal family. And that's kind of sad. I, I, I just can't wait to see where, you know, this is going to lead. Of course, they're going to get the deals. Of course, she's going to appear in movies. Of course, but we'll see how long that goodwill is going to pick them. And I guess there's also a lesson in that. Because this all started with the marriage. And marriage is not easy. Good Lord knows this. <laughs> this union has actually shown us that, yeah, marriage is not easy. And you have to be very careful with the person that you choose because whoever you choose could put you on crossroads with your own family. And then you have to choose. You have to be like Harry. 